Right, well, here's the next machine that I've been working on. Uh, it's been well over a month since I did the video on the Raleigh Wisp. And I said I would probably work on the Raleigh Runabout. Uh, and here it is. So uh, we've got a nice day for a change. So we'll have a little go on the Raleigh Runabout. Now it's been... Uh, sorted and generally refurbished. So off we go, pedal it to get the clutch engaged and you can tell immediately that it's higher geared than the Wisp because it doesn't pull anything like as well. Right, open her up a little bit. Oh yes, we're, once you've got a bit of momentum it's it's pretty good. It's a very, very sweet motor on this one. It's done far less miles than the Raleigh Wisp has. Pulling on that little uphill slope. Right, let me show Oh yes, it's starting to go quite nicely. Uh, yeah, it said we got up to 15 miles an hour on this bicycle speedometer which I put on in the late 70s it's a bicycle one uh, just like the Raleigh Wisp this has been in my possession a long time not as long as the the Wisp but in I, I bought this in the late 70s from a chap I worked with who didn't really get on with it he didn't drive at all lots of people didn't drive back then and they didn't want to and he thought he'd try a, a moped and it didn't agree with him and he got a flat tyre and that was enough for him to put it in the shed and forget about it. And then uh, we got talking one day and he said, oh, I've got this one with a flat tyre, are you interested? And I wasn't really, but I bought it off him for about a tenner, I think. Right, I'll leave it running because the engine is really sweet on this one. It's got a nice little two-stroke pop-pop. As you can hear, hopefully. Uh, it's got very nice chrome on this uh, magneto. And uh, the other thing I noticed was that it had far brighter lights than the Wisp. Now that just suggests that the magneto on the Wisp has lost a bit of magnetism because this one, the lights are far better and I think if, uh, if it had a buzzer on it, it would probably work even with the lights on. Uh, on the Wisp the clutch side was uh, quite good, the chrome, so I left it. This one was rusty and uh, Back in the late 70s I painted it and it's just as it was. Uh, on the other side the magneto is in good condition. The chrome's lovely. And the centre left hand nut is seems to be made from some sort of mazak. And it does polish up. So one of the things I'll be doing is uh, taking that nut off which is the left hand thread and uh, polishing it instead of having it painted silver. I may even try another magneto on it because when I bought this for next to nothing <laughs> um, another chap I worked with had passed a skip with a Raleigh runabout in it. We're talking uh, in the night, well probably 77, 78, something like that and um, he said, do you want it? And he threw it in the back of his van and uh, I've still got it. It's the same colour as this, nowhere near as nice because this one is exceptional, there's no question. Bob, you're allowed to say it looks mint because from this distance it does look mint. Um, it's done very, very few miles. I know that Ted, you know, he, w he wasn't mechanically minded and um, once it got a, a, a really bad puncher, he just stuck it in the shed. And I reckon 
that the reason the magneto is is shiny on this one and the clutch cover is is shiny on the wisp is is the way they were stored in the sheds because they obviously were left in the sheds for years um, presumably if they were left with the the side nearest the side of the shed it uh, it retained its chrome because as I said this chrome is really good on the on the magneto uh, on the flywheel which is whizzing round external flywheel can see it um, the rims are as good as new no question of that it's even got chrome on the exhaust pipe which is unusual um, I've changed two things well three things the first was the chrome strip down the middle um, that had completely gone off so I just put a new pit new bit on there um, it's got a new piece of uh, hosing uh, the petrol pipes uh, plastic had you know it's hardened and gone so I changed that so it's just the petrol pipe that bit of trim and the third thing is a cotter pin which is there because when I got it back from Ted's and I'll stop it now there's a, if you go forward on the throttle there's a decompressor which also makes it easier to start uh, when I got it from Ted and I'm, I think maybe one of the reasons he wasn't bothered with it was that this pedal was loose and I tightened it up a few times but uh, it didn't really stay tight and eventually I took it out and found that both the thread on the pedal and in the crank um, were in poor condition presumably because Ted had been uh, peddling it and not bothering to to screw it up properly either that or a manufacturer's fault anyway back in the day when it really didn't matter what I did because these things were completely worthless uh, I just tack welded the back end just put it on its side uh, tack welded the back end well I decided to do a better jo job of it this time as I was doing a refurb and uh, to do that you have to take that pin out the cotter pin and uh, thankfully you can still buy these it was the worst cotter pin I've ever had to remove um, I mean back in the 50s and early 60s I was making up bicycles all the time <coughs> and I'd ride them to school and sell them and that's how I made enough money to buy my first bike <coughs> excuse me and I never had a problem getting cotter pins out they always came out but they always ended up beaten up and I'd have to spend pocket money uh, replacing them this the one in there was so bad I had to drill it right through um, I, I cut it off with a uh, disc uh, both ends and then got a huge punch and it still won't come out so I had to drill right through to to ease it and then after a lot of bashing I managed to get it off uh, and then I did a better weld job on it and ground it off and uh, then resprayed the crank so that's the only real sort of job I've done on this um, I decided to reuse the original because it was part of the original bike which means everything on this machine is as it was when it left the factory and it really is there is no repainting of any kind on this machine everything you see is as it left the factory I mean there are definite imperfections actually a lot of that's just mud off the wheels with my whizzing around the garden yeah I can see where I've uh, lubricated the chain too on the other side it's getting messy but that's normal uh, everything is really nice with this motor uh, my late wife used to ride it for fun and uh, back then uh, there was a wire basket on this carrier which I made and she would go shopping by choice it wasn't a question of having to because we'd already got two cars by then we even had two properties back then anyway um, 
she really liked it but as you can see it's really basic no suspension of any kind whatsoever except the saddle and this one's a 1966 and uh, that was about the same year I bought my first bike which was a Honda 50 brand new and that was about 110 pounds that Honda and I know these were less just a little less than 50 pounds so for a little less than 50 quid back then you you could get a, a reliable uh, moped that would take you to work and back and as I said on the wisp people didn't tend to work very far from home back then 50 years ago things were very different for one thing not everyone had a car in fact uh, very few people um, ordinary working folk could afford cars and uh, I do remember when I started uh, as a trainee one of the fitters big chap uh, we used to call him Hillo his name was Ray Hill but he, kept, he was called Ray uh, Hillo and he had one of these for years and at the site where we worked at that time he would go backwards and forwards um, twice a day on his Raleigh runabout and he was a big guy and um, I suppose he did seven maybe seven miles a day <coughs> and he did that for years and years and I left that site and went back a few years later <coughs> and um, he was still using it but he had given it a bit of a going over and had repainted it um, hand painted it and it was still running and uh, he said well I've never touched the engine and of course you do need to change the plug on these things occasionally <coughs> because with the old type oil it's 20 to 1 mix uh, so plugs have a tendency to oil up and I remember when I got this thing I went back to the shop where I bought the coil for the Raleigh Wisp and I bought a new rear tyre and tube and rim tape and um, hanging up in the shop were the panniers that you see here which were optional extras for this very bike uh, unfortunately he didn't have the pannier frames he said he sold those years ago and uh, I made the pannier frames up and that carrier you can see uh, out of half inch flat mild steel uh, actually I did a good job um, I look back on it you know 40 years on and think well they're, they're not bad <laughs> actually did you actually make those yes I did I, w I made them up and welded them up and uh, they're certainly stronger than uh, than the others would have been a little bit of mud on there actually there's a lot of mud on the on the ground uh, worm casts are coming up you can see the tires mucky now it was beautiful <laughs> just before I started uh, it's definitely in better condition than the wisp uh, it, it's light years better even when you come up close to it um, there are imperfections but it's about the same as a I should say a two or three year old bike that had been used by someone that was fairly careful uh, as I say Ted didn't use it much he just got the flat tire presumably had problems with that pedal and thought oh I've had enough of this and then I uh, it came to me <coughs> uh, I didn't really intend to keep it but as I say my wife had a go on it round the garden uh, two well, two houses ago and uh, of course like most ladies she's uh, having a first go on anything she went a little bit out of control but thank God there was no tire on it the tire was so bad I'd cut it off and so she went round the garden uh, uh, just as it was without the tire uh, thank God it wasn't because she went out she just lost the plot and jumped off the saddle as if it was a, a, a lady's bike and tried to sort of stop it by paddling but of course she had the throttle wide open because she was in a panic and she ended up in a uh, in a in a bush uh, thankfully <laughs> it was a soft bush and um, all that happened was the rear wheel just kept spinning round because 